Good day, grade 10s. In this lesson, we're going to be discussing the mass and diameter of an atom. Now, we know that atoms are very small, but let us look at the mass of carbon. Carbon's mass is 1.99 times 10 to the minus 26 kilograms. So you need to understand that is naught within 26 noughts behind it, and then 1,99 kilograms. That's incredibly tiny. Hydrogen is even smaller. It has a mass of 1.67 times by 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. So these numbers are ridiculous to look at and even to try and work with. So what scientists did, scientists did, is that they decided on what they called an atomic mass unit. And they let carbon be 12 units. So they just decided that's a carbon, 12 is 12 units. And then, okay, there is a reason for that, but we'll worry about that later. So the reason they used carbon was because carbon is the most prolific atom that we can find on Earth, one of the most prolific. And secondly, it is the most stable. So then what they did was they compared all the masses of all the atoms. So then, for example, we've got nitrogen. Nitrogen is four units, so you can, 14 units. So you can see that nitrogen is heavier than carbon, whereas magnesium is 24.3. So you can see that magnesium is almost twice as heavy as carbon. And then you've got hmm, 16 oxygen, 16 just a little bit heavier. So do you see that they have compared everything to the carbon. So that's what we mean by relative atomic mass. It is relative to the other atoms. Right, now let us talk about the structure of the atom. We already know that in the center of the atom is the nucleus and the nucleus consists of the protons which are positively charged and the neutrons which are neutral. But there are also around them on the outer edges in the shells because we're using Bohr's model at the moment, are the electrons. And these electrons are in the shells. Now, I know this diagram is a bit misleading. And the reason it's misleading is because, firstly, these electrons are approximately 2,000 times smaller than the protons and the neutrons. And secondly, if I draw this, drew this nucleus, this big on this page, we would not see the electrons. Let me give you an idea of the scale. If we have here, we have here the stadium, the big soccer stadium in, in Gauteng. And if you look here, you can see, I'm sure you can see, there's a gentleman in the middle. Okay, no, you can't see him because he's not there. Okay, but if we had to put a gentleman in the middle and you make him hold an orange and we say, okay, fine, the orange is your nucleus. And then we get some crazy person that can run around the edge, the outer edge of this calabash. And you see him running around the outer edge of this stadium. He will be running around and he will be representing the electron. But in his hand will be a pinhead because that's approximately the size difference. So do you see the difference? Most of the atoms made up of space. He, the dude in the middle that you can't see is holding an orange. That's the nucleus. Let me give you another analogy. Let's say you've got a golf ball, but this time the golf ball represents the electron. And that day in the background, that city over there is the nucleus. So if that is the city and that's the nucleus, look how tiny the golf ball or the electron is. And how far away is the first orbital? It is 1.5 miles. Now we in South Africa don't use miles, we use kilometers. So that is about three, no, about 2.5 to 3 kilometers. That is far. And you'll notice again that most of the atom is made up of empty space. So I hope grade 10, so this gives you an idea of the atomic structure. We'll be learning more about the atom in the rest of the series. Thank you.